All right, the Reds, it's talking Reds. Gareth Roberts, Andy Heaton, we're doing it from the centre of Liverpool as ever. Uh, and talking Reds is, if you've never seen it before, two people from the Anfield app talking about what's going on. And what's going on is Vincent Company has said that Virgil van Dijk is the Premier League's best ever centre back, and that's ruffled a few feathers. Obviously, John Terry gets mentioned, Ferdinand gets mentioned. I think Ferdinand's already sort of big themselves up on this one, which is no surprise, is it? But Company's quote is, I would bring it back to Virgil van Dijk. He's not been on the scene as long as Terry or Ferdinand have been around for a long time but he's shown if he had been around longer he'd have been at the top for a long long time and this is kind of the point isn't it Andy uh, lots of people will bring in you know oh well what about Premier League medals and things like that but ultimately he's obviously a really 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 good centre half and I kind of don't get the debate around you've got to have done X because it's a team game and if you're talking about an individual judgment like Matt Letizia, he was brilliant, wasn't he? But he just played for Southampton. So does that mean he's shit? No, he was brilliant still, even though he only played for Southampton and didn't win the Premier League. Do you know what I mean? So where are you on this one? No, I'm, I'm kind of with you. I mean, there's two, there's two shining examples. Um, George Best being one of them. Yeah. Um, never, I don't think he played competitively in the world, you know, international, did he? Not sure. Not never, sure. never made the World Cup. And then the other fella, the, you know, the, Recognises the greatest player possibly ever to to play the games. Lionel Messi hasn't won a World Cup. You know what I mean? They, they, you can, and can he can't name, win it on his own. And, can and he can't he? win it on his own. Can he? Yeah. I could name you about five different players who probably wouldn't get in our reserves who have World Cup medals. Eric Jemba Jemba being a prime example. No, but it, it's great. As soon as I saw it, I thought, oh, yeah, here we go. But I mean, I don't know whether it's widely known, but Vincent Company was a Liverpool fan as a kid. So you know, so was Rio Ferdinand, incidentally. Was he? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't know that one. Part of the but no, it's a huge testament to Van Dyke and company being a centre half would know. I mean, I, I remember grow, growing up, just as a Liverpool fan growing up, but the, the, the state of some of the centre halves we've had to deal with, and then you'd look down the M62 and you'd see Yap Stam, who's this man mountain, and you're thinking, imagine if we had one of, the, one of them, not sort of like one of them. Instead uh, of like instead Nicky Tanner Nick, and John's, Cavani. And... Cavani, Ruddock, John Scales, Phil Babb. Phil Babb still brings back a shudder, those that know, know. Um, yeah. How's your plums, Phil? Yeah. Um, so, 100%, I, I think what company said as well, he said the, the Liverpool pre Van Dyke is totally different to the Liverpool post Van Dyke. That's right, yeah. And I think he's absolutely spot on. I think just having that reassurance at the back changes the, the, the mentality of the team. We don't look shaky, we don't look nervous. We've been, we've been, I think we've been sat together. And the game before, where you've got a 1 0 lead and you're kind of like, oh, we need a second here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Second day. And it always transmits onto the pitch. Um, as the pressure gets ramped up, but no, none of that anymore. I mean, don't get me wrong, I think almost as important as being the goalkeeper, but we're not talking about him today, but I think them in tandem have turned Liverpool into possibly the most solid defensive unit in, in the Premier League and one of the one of the best in Europe, and uh, he did, Verge deserves everything he gets. I think what's telling as well for me is if you speak to fans of other clubs as well, where he's been, so, you know, obviously Southampton, Celtic, but Celtic in particular for me, because I know a couple of Celtic fans and we, we did some content up there and stuff like that. And they said about him that they were surprised, A, that they got him, and B, that he stayed there as long as he did, because they said it was so obvious as soon as you saw him that the levels that he was capable of, where he could go, what he could do. And I think I think what's interesting about it for me is if you think about, you mentioned all the centre arts we've had, and like you sort of knew that, even the good ones, if you like, or the ones that are fondly remembered, You'd have something in the locker that wasn't quite right. Do you know what I mean? Like if you think of Henshaw, he was like a brilliant stopper, wasn't he? Yeah. Like, and, and like you know, he famously ambled the, the, the ball about twenty times against Arsenal. Get in! You didn't say that, Sam. No. Um, but you know, you wouldn't want Henshaw dribbling the ball out from the back, would you? Do you know <laughs> I, what I mean? I think if you could create a centre half in a mad lab experiment, you would probably end up with something like Virgil Van Dijk. So one thing that struck me, and I, I love Jamie Carragher, I think Jamie Carragher is recognised as a legend, but what struck me is when Carragher interviewed Van Dijk, and Van Dijk looks about a foot yeah. taller than him, yeah. and you're like, fucking hell. So, yeah, all of that, as you said, I don't, I don't see, and touch wood, I don't see a weakness in his game, but I think a lot of that's been shaped by how he's come by his career journey so far, because he's not come through the Ajax Academy. As you say, he's come, um, come references it, like he hasn't been around that long, where... He was, he was getting it, he wasn't, he was at Groningham, money. he? Yeah, isn't um, that where he had that mad health scare? That, and all that stuff, and his journey to become a footballer, it's kind of mirrors Ian Wright when he came late into the game, mm. so he's, he, he wonder whether his career will then be extended because it started so late. But yeah, you couldn't, I don't, I don't think you could imagine up someone more suited to play that role, it's just 
I, I, I can't see flow in his game. Keep on keeping on, Virgil, lad. Well, uh, the, other, um, the other bit of news, if you want to call it news, that's uh, generating a lot of uh, chat this morning, is the idea that Real Madrid uh, are ready, whatever that means, um, sat, on, sat on like a big load of cash just going like that. Uh, but they're ready to bid 210 million quid for uh, Mo Salah. That's Don Ballon in Spain reporting it, which... I Don mean, Balloon, more like. More, basically means you can rule it out as bullshit from, from the get-go, but let's do it anyway. I mean, f- I, I think it's worth almost talking about Spanish culture before we talk about what it actually says in the report, because you know we've both been there and we've, we've been fortunate enough to see Liverpool play at, at both grounds, you know, Bar- the big ones, Barcelona and Madrid, etc., and just being there and seeing what it's like and speaking to people, the culture is mad, isn't it? It's very political around football. So there's someone, a president or whatever, who's constantly got to get it out there, that they're ambitious, that they're looking to do things, that they've got the, the club's best interest at heart. So it, it's to their advantage to just seep things like this into the press all the time, isn't it? I think it's brilliant, you know. I mean, if It is got, funny. It's quite comical. What, like. what, what, what I can't get my head around is how... They've got 210 million sack cash for Salah this week and didn't have it last week when yeah. the transfer window they're was ready, still open. Yeah, they're ready, ready to pounce. Someone I mean, came in and went, shh, uh, like that's it, we've got 210 now. This is the this is the same Real Madrid that are desperate to get rid of Gareth Bale because the wage bill and... You Spent know, about 300 million well, quid as well. E- exactly, exactly. But no, as you said, it, it's... Um, the time of it to tell you everything you need to know. There's been no indication. And you know what, it, it's the old advice that it fills space, doesn't it? I mean, unlike... In England, there are there are more football daily football publications dedicated to football, and there is a lot of page to fill. And um, you know, maybe if it, if, it, if it, the fact that we're even talking about it shows, you know, it, it, the, why it's there. It's so easy to do as well, though, isn't it? It's like you know, if you're if you're in a newspaper office and you've got your laptop open and you're like, you know, as you say, you know, more and more space now is devoted to sport than ever before. You know, you've got the website aspect as well, needing to get clicks, needing to create headlines, needing to kick off on Twitter and all the rest of it. It's just so easy to join some dots. So it's like, you know, okay, so Madrid, that's where most, Madrid or Barcelona, that's where most players end up leaving, it seems. You know, the, the best players from the Premier League, that's where they'll go, okay, so Madrid, so who's, who's the best player in, in the Premier League right now? Who's scored shitloads of goals? Mo Salah, sound. Uh, okay. Uh, what else can we say? Oh, let's say he's only stayed because um, they won the Champions League, the Champions League, and they'd be ready to force a move if they don't repeat that or win the Premier League. I mean, I and go to, go to Real Madrid, who last, who currently what champions of Spain now? And also, he signed. I mean, like, look, we've seen this fall down before, but I think his deal is till 2023, I think, and there's no release clause in it either. So Liverpool are in a really, really strong position. I mean, I guess the other conversation around it is. It, you know, the every player has a price type of thing. And we do know that in the modern day, if, for instance, Salah is agent, his family, and there's no indication of any of that at this stage, but if they all did start kicking off and said, we want to go, we want to, we, you know, the lifestyle's better for us, we want the sunshine, all the usual things that you've heard a million times. Is there a fee, is there a figure where you think Liverpool will go, OK, then we'll do business and we'll get X, Y and Z? I think there's a figure that Liverpool do business, but I think it's a figure that Liverpool do business on under their own steam. Yeah. Um, I think it's succession plan and I think it's a case of uh, certainly not this season or next season I think it's about 27 it's 27, 28 no, I'm, not, yeah. um, I'm in a unique position now where you know we are champions of Europe we are one of the top two teams in the Premier League we, sh- we shouldn't feel I don't know I almost previously when Barcelona and Real Madrid come in you're almost like oh god they're, they're, why should, should we really uh-huh. be asked? You know, we, we, can, I, we can beat both of them. And maybe it's it's like, and especially with Salah, it's not like he's South American. There's always this thing with South yeah. Americans. They always end up at Barcelona, Madrid. He's not. He's from Egypt, and you know he's the main man at Liverpool. Um, and I think the, 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 the cautionary tale would be the fellow who's just been sent on loan to Bayern Munich, Coutinho. Yeah. Um, you know, and I mean, don't get me wrong. If if the what if it comes to pass that Salah did one out, and I would not understand why he would unless something disastrous happened then. You'd have to look at it there, but there's absolutely no indication whatsoever. I mean, I love the the, the, the sort of the almost the bullshit of it. Like they have to win the Champions League or the Premier League. Well, they came within a point of winning the Premier League last season, and they did win the Champions League the season before. They were in a Champions League final. Like the, the, there is obvious. It's obvious that you know it's not a flash in the pan. Liverpool are a great side, playing great football, continually challenging. 
I think uh, Don and his ballon can get to fuck, to be honest. Uh, okay, so uh, that's been Talking Reds then. Uh, on the Anfield Wrap today, uh, there is a new show out called The Focus. Uh, looking at football in the ground, the football on the telly. There's a Friday show to come out later too. Uh, so yeah, get involved. Uh, we are filming more video today as well. So it, whether it's video, whether it's podcast, whether it's writing, all of that stuff's on theanfieldwrap.com. There's a special coming soon, which we'll tell you more about soon as well. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, nice one, Andy. Nice one, Sam. Up the fucking reds.